Hi there. Well, tonight I've got a couple of great announcements. Um, the first one is that I've now released Banked 0.2. What that means is you're going to be able to have a go with Banked 2. I'm going to take you through what you need and how you get to have a go uh, and play with Banked and maybe even also how you can add some of your own modifications to Banked as well. And the other big announcement is I've hit 500 subscribers. Well, hey! So to get started with Banks, you're going to need some ESP8266 board and that's any ESP8266 um, but because Banks is aimed at doing things in a very simple way I recommend uh, the Node MCU board. Uh, this should also work with the, is it the Adafruit Feather um, or the, um, the Witty Cloud. So a whole bunch of different boards with ESP on them. Um, I still think the Node MCU represents the best in value and simplicity for getting started. Um, you're going to need a couple of LEDs um, or just stuff to drive with it. So I don't know. I mean, Banks is meant to be about physical computing. So the sooner you can get your hands on things to attach to it, the better. At the moment, Banks knows how to set IO pins on and off. It knows how to read from uh, the DHT sensor, which is a temperature sensor. Um, and I'm adding blocks to interact with all kinds of things. Um, it also knows how to talk with a WS2812 LED array or string or any of the other arrangements you can have with these. The other thing you're going to need, by the way, is you need Node MCU firmware flashed on your ESP. So let's see how you get it connected. I'm using Windows. This should work on Mac and on Linux. You will need to have Chrome installed and you will also have needed to have the, uh, the serial drivers for USB to serial already installed if you're using USB to serial. And uh, let's get stuck into what you need to do on the computer to actually run it. Okay, so first you'll need to have Chrome set up or Chromium or something similar. And to actually install Banks, you need to go to github.com slash Orion Robots. I'll put the links in below. Orion Robots slash Banks. And there you'll be able to see releases. So you've got the code here if you wanted to contribute and play with it. Um, releases is just to get a version you can run on your desktop right now. Okay, now there's banks.crx. If we click and get this and save it and then drag it into your extensions. You need to go to about colon extensions and drag and drop to install it. Drop the one you just did. You add app, it'll say access your serial devices, which obviously we'd like it to be able to do. And here's Banks with a rather fetching robot logo. Right, so if I now launch Bounce, and we'll see the Bounce window pop up. So that's relatively painless to install. Um, I might change the default resolution of this to make it a bit bigger. Um, so we've got our console, which tells us what has happened or what is happening, our code window, and some menus to do things. So the first thing we want to do is in the connect menu click find chip it'll look for various items so what it does is it scans through all the serial ports it sends a test to see if the device is there when it's found it it adds it to the menu and you can say i'm going to connect to this so it enables the go and stop buttons now obviously there's no code so if you click go it won't do a lot at all um, so let's pick up some examples and let's say print hello world and I might need to get make it so that defaults being the center of the screen okay so this is print repeat text hello for five times so you'll see the word hello 
five times in the console when we press go. Hello, 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 hello. And I'm now going to plug it into a board. So I'm going to show you the simplest circuit you can make with an ESP. Um, there will be people screaming at me because I'm not using a transistor and really you should, but I'm going to show you how to do it simply without that first. So we take an LED, connect it from D1, and we'll just connect it over that gap here. And I'll then get a resistor. That should be 470, right? So LED with a resistor going back from the LED to ground. And oh, the LED lights because I've left it turned on here. Okay, so let me get rid of that code. And if we take output, we take pin one output, pin one, and write false to turn that back off. And there we are, we can turn it off and we can turn it on. It's not that bright. It will be brighter if I used a transistor in the way. Um, so this can be used to learn coding. It can actually also be used as a basis to learn electronics where people might be using an Arduino. But let's focus on the code side. Um, so what else can you do? Okay, there are a bunch of examples here in the examples menu. Blink and LED. which demonstrates using pins, it demonstrates using variables, which you can see in the variables menu here. Um, there's a timer here, which is the SP way of doing things or the node MC way of doing things. We run that. Again, we get timing, blinking LEDs. And here is the big red stop button. Now what this big red stop button will do is it will stop the timers. It will not turn off the outputs it will just stop the timers running. Um, I am considering if I want it to set all outputs to ground. I'm not entirely convinced that's the right thing to do yet. Um, so you can open files. You can save this as another file. So let me see. So we've got some Boolean tests here where I was just testing the Boolean values for writing a pin. You can save and save as. Now this is interesting. This is set as start code. So for those not familiar with ESP, uh, you can set up some code that will be run when the ESP starts up. You can upload a file called init.lua. So set as start code sets that as the init lua item. Files on chip currently doesn't do anything. Um, What's planned to go there is a dialog that allows you to browse files on the chip. So we'll, I'll get to that and I'll make a version that does that. So as this is, you can play with it. You can try and upload code. Um, if you actually want to contribute, then you can go and get the code from GitHub instead of the release, pick out and check out the code. Um, all of the blocks for this, so this is based on Blockly, are in a file called customnodeblocks.js. Okay, so this is not so much for users as for contributors. So if you look, there's the pin mode. Uh, there is pin write, pin read, analog read, which I'm yet to actually test properly, I suppose. It seems to work. Um, the timer code, the WS2812, so the LED panel code, temperature, humidity, and I'll be adding new blocks here. So if you want to get hacking and help out, please add new blocks for some of your favorite chips and devices that you connect to the ESP. Um, which should be good fun, really. I mean, we can see what we end up with. Uh, I am willing to accept pull requests. 
if someone wants to look at there's a roadmap document but obviously if they've got a bit of an itch to scratch for some other particular thing they want to connect some sensor please do contribute the blocks and uh, I hope people have fun and get to play with it all right uh, if you like this uh, please share it with people subscribe give me a thumbs up and uh, I'll be doing more with ESP more with banks I'm going to be demonstrating banks at various places around London, various places where they have uh, coding groups together. Um, so if you are in one of the London coding dojos or one of the London um, educating computing meetings, so there's a Twickenham meeting I go to sometimes, um, I'll be demonstrating banks, uh, maybe even getting some other people who have ESPs in a state where they can use banks and demonstrate it and perhaps use it with some students um, who've been used to Scratch or have seen other Blockly languages. And uh, yes, expect to have great fun. Thank you very much. Good night.